He is a hometown hero with a platform stretching around the world now. Shaquem Griffin, former UCF superstar, now NFL player, is in the headlines again, this time sharing the spotlight with a little boy. We love this. Morning anchor Kirsten O'Connor joins us now. And Kirsten, you were there to witness this special moment. That's right, and it truly is a dream come true for this family. What you might not know is little Joseph Tid from this video was actually in another viral video from back in November. And we asked the family then who they hope sees this video. Their answer, Shaquem Griffin. Excitement building. What's up? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited you guys are here. For a moment, that's once in a lifetime. Let's go this way, ready? One, two, three. For one-year-old Joseph Tidd, Shaquem Griffin is the ultimate hero. It's because they share a special connection. Fist bump! You might remember Joseph from this viral video showing a fist bump with a new friend from the Lucky Finn Project, a group that celebrates people with limb differences. When we met Joseph's mom, Colleen, we asked about Griffin. I went to UCF as well, so of course I'm going to be a Griffin fan. Central Florida native and history-making linebacker Shaquem Griffin was the first one-handed player to ever be picked in the NFL draft. Well, I would love to meet him, absolutely, and so with my husband, uh, but no, we haven't met him. That was before. <laughs> Griffin appeared at an event hosted by Brooks Rehabilitation in Jacksonville to meet with fans. Why is he your hero? Well, he has the same hand as me, and he's one of he's one of my best friends. What do you think about that? People calling you their hero. Um. Well, for me, it's just I never thought it would be that way. I never thought it would happen. If we had, you know, more time or just in general, anyone with a lucky fin for him to be able to see that difference. Yeah, it's like it, that moment where he realizes, whoa, it clicks. somebody else uh, me. Are you happy? <laughs> you want to interview me? I thought you did a really good job. I mean, Colleen and I talked about it when Joseph was born that, um, you, we just don't want people to, to tell him he can't do things. And Shaquem, I mean, more so for us, maybe his parents, is really an inspiration because he proves that you can overcome and you can do it. So it, for Joseph to have somebody to actually look up to and say, hey, I can do what he did, I mean, for, I mean that's the most special thing for us. I want to be able to use my platform to inspire others no matter what age it is, no matter how many limbs you have, no matter where you come from. And this video has been viewed thousands of times online. There's one message the Tid family hopes will get results after all this, and that is no limits, not for their son or for anyone in the Lucky Finn community. Kirsten O'Connor, Getting Results, News 6. Okay, how do you not just love so good. every single bit of that? Yeah. That is amazing. He's he inspiring is amazing. so many people. Yes. Yeah. Well, a girl in Central Florida wants to push lawmakers to get results to bring down the cost of her life-saving medication, insulin. Yeah, we first introduced you to this incredible 12-year-old last week when she took part in a medical roundtable with Congresswoman Val Demings. I don't really want to go to Canada to get my medication. I don't think, as an American, I should have to cross the border, go to Canada, get my medication. I should, it doesn't seem right to me. Claire Goodowens plans on traveling to Washington, D.C. this summer to share her story with Congress. But before that, News 6 Morning anchor Kirsten O'Connor tells us how the girl from Winter Park has gotten to this point in this week's Getting Results for Your Health. This is how 12-year-old Claire Goodowen sticks through a swim practice. 86. I have to sit at the pool with her. Oh, I'm 13. What people don't see is the, it's literally seven days a week, 24 hours a day that she is working. I'm starting to trend here. A quick walk around Claire's room and you'll find... I love purses. Diabetic testing strips. Candy. Each Smarty roll is five carbs, which is really good for us diabetics. Medals. These, since I've been diagnosed, alcohol wipes, finger prickers, and the entire cabinet of pump insertions. We met Claire last year as the youngest artist to ever be featured in the Winter Park Sidewalk Art Festival. Since then, she's been taking on a new challenge. This would, of course, be connected to the cartridge that has the insulin. And then, into yourself. I leaned over my mom like, oh yeah, so how long am I going to have to do this for? And then she said, forever. And that was the point I knew that it was serious. During our interview, alarms around the house. Obviously, you feel like you She's dropping. Went off anytime Claire's blood sugar numbers got high or low. 
I have not slept through the night since she's been diagnosed. And it, and it was really traumatic. And then she would just say, I hate this. This is terrible. I don't want this. Yeah. Anyway, so I told her, me too. Claire's mom, Samantha, tells us with insurance, they pay $1,000 to $1,500 a month for Claire's insulin and medical supplies. She's not alone. A study from Healthcare Cost Institute shows that the cost of insulin in the United States doubled in 2016 and has only gone up since then. Roughly one in four diabetics admit to rationing their life-saving medication. That shouldn't have to happen. Getting results for your health. Kirsten O'Connor, News 6. What an inspiring little girl, and she's going to get results, trust me. Claire is preparing to travel to Washington, D.C. with her Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation chapter in Central Florida for Children's Congress. And she has a challenge she hopes will go viral starting in July. Find out more on ClickOrlando.com. Head to the Getting Results tab and click for your health. Tonight, a breakthrough in what's commonly referred to as bubble boy disease is giving local families some new hope. The disease attacks the immune system and in the past has forced doctors to take some really extreme measures. Yeah, as News 6 Morning anchor Kirsten O'Connor, she sat down with one Central Florida family living with this rare genetic disorder and the promising new treatment that is getting results for patients' health. Back in the 70s, we did put babies in bubbles, and that's how they were treated. 40 years ago, doctors called it a one-in-a-million disease. But since then, we no longer do that. Severe Combined Immunodeficiency, or SCID, is a rare genetic disease Hollywood brought into the public eye in 1976 in The Boy in the Plastic Bubble, a movie starring John Travolta. But Heather Smith has lived it. And while we were there, he smiled at my husband, and the doctor said, Babies that are really sick won't smile. I think he's going to be okay. And three weeks later, he passed away. Doctors learned Smith's son, Brandon, was born with a genetic mutation, leaving him without an immune system. Her second son, Taylor, would be born with the same disease, but was treated with the first ever in utero bone marrow transplant. In my mind, I feel like uh, Taylor's looking up in heaven at his brother, Brandon. So it's pretty special. Today, Taylor is 23, a college graduate, and up until recently, living a full and healthy life. There is no need anymore for bubbles, but there is still a place for isolation. Dr. Jennifer Lighting is the director of the SCID Newborn Screening Program at the University of South Florida. The only way to treat SCID is um, replacing the infant's immune system or um, fixing the infant's immune system. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital just released new results in the New England Journal of Medicine revealing eight babies treated with gene therapy are growing and developing healthy immune systems. Gene therapy is the new kid on the block, so to speak. Instead of giving a new immune system to the infant, you are fixing their own immune system. Now patients like Taylor are on wait lists for the treatment with the hope it will last a lifetime. The therapy hasn't been there long enough to know whether these therapies are going to be curative, but they are definitely making a huge difference in the patient's life. In our eyes, if it was a cure, then genetically it would stop and you wouldn't have to worry about the implications of it anymore. And he does have to worry about passing it on to his daughters. If Taylor ever has daughters, they would likely become carriers of the genetic mutation, like his mother, passing skid on to their children. But with early diagnosis and a combination of bone marrow transplants and gene therapy, children who are born with skid have a much better chance at a healthier, longer life, a life without fear of isolation. Kirsten O'Connor, Getting Results, News 6. And Dr. Lighting and Walter say the test for skid cost about $5 and is administered about 4 million times each year in the U.S.